Holy Week for us Orthodox Christians is a liturgical and a spiritual sojourn with Christ to Golgotha. Golgotha, of course, was that hill in Jerusalem whereupon Jesus himself was crucified. As mentioned in my sermon this past Sunday, when Jesus came into Jerusalem, six days before the Passover, he came not only to be heralded as a triumphant king to the cries of Hosanna, but he also and especially came into Jerusalem to hear the cries of crucify him, crucify him. His goal and his destination was Golgotha, so that he could fulfill all righteousness and accomplish the salvation of mankind. With Jesus' death as the incarnate word, Jesus himself destroyed death. We know that three days after his crucifixion, he rose again from the dead. It is his resurrection from the dead that together we will celebrate come Easter morning at midnight. And his resurrection, of course, is a corroboration that Jesus is whom he claimed to be, the Son of God, who can avail to us the fruit of the Holy Spirit and life everlasting. Tonight, of course, we are celebrating the bridegroom service of Holy Tuesday evening. According to the Synaxarion, which is a reading of Matins on this day, this evening, we are in actuality celebrating the Matin service of Holy Wednesday in anticipation. Scripturally, hymnologically, and liturgically, on this evening, we are commemorating, that is to say, remembering the woman who went to the house of Simon the leper to anoint Jesus with myrrh. In this service, the repentance of this woman, who is oftentimes alluded to as a harlot by the hymnology of the church, in this service, her repentance and her belief is compared and contrasted to the repentance and belief of Judas Iscariot. And so it is that the importance of repentance and belief to one's life in Christ, to the attainment of knowledge of God, to the actualization of the kingdom of God, is certainly one of the sub-themes of this evening's celebration. The importance of repentance and belief to the Christian life, of course, was attested to repeatedly by Jesus Christ. For example, we read in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 15, the words of our Lord where he calls people to repentance and belief. According to the evangelist, this call, as recorded by him, were the very first words that he articulated, saying, repent and believe in the Gospel, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. From the words of Jesus, and indeed from the words of this evening service. The first ingredient, the first virtue needed by the Christian in order to know God, and knowing God, of course, is our ultimate goal in life, and the first ingredient needed in order to attain the kingdom of God is faith in God. Faith, by definition of St. Paul in Hebrews 11.1, 1, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The Holy Apostle Paul, time and time again, tells us that it is faith in Christ that justifies a person, puts him in a right relationship with God. Without faith, a person cannot be a Christian. He cannot know God, nor can he actualize peace or the fruit of the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Apostle Paul, in Romans 5.1, in an oft-quoted passage, says, Therefore we are justified by faith and have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance, of course, is the second ingredient, 
The second virtue needed in order to know God. Repentance, by definition, is that action of changing one's mind and one's heart about his sins, that is to say, every word, thought, deed, action, and then action that precludes a person from having a relationship with God. Unlike Judas Iscariot, the woman who went to anoint Jesus at the house of Simon the leper was a person who had this change of heart. Because she did, even as we must have a change of heart to know God, because she did, she attained the kingdom of heaven. Repentance is a necessary virtue for the actualization of the heavenly kingdom. Jesus himself says as much. In the Gospel of Matthew 18, 13, he says, unless you repent, unless you become like a child, unless you have that innocence of a child, you shall not enter into the kingdom of God. Interestingly, throughout the ages, Christians of every denominational persuasion have recognized the importance of faith to the actualization of the kingdom of God. But when many Christians fail to realize, especially those who believe that we are justified by faith alone, is why repentance is exalted together with faith. The question is oftentimes asked, why is it that the evangelist Mark tells us that Jesus initiated his ministry by calling people not only to faith, but to repentance as well? Now, the answer, of course, is communicated to us by this evening's liturgical service. Liturgically and hymnologically, it communicates to us this answer by giving us a reflection upon the harlot, that is to say, the fallen woman, and Judas Iscariot. Their story, of course, is told in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23, verses 6 to 16. Interestingly, this is not the gospel reading for this evening, keeping in mind that this evening's service is the Matin's service of Holy Wednesday in anticipation. The gospel lesson where the story of the harlot and Judas Iscariot is read for us is at the divine liturgy that is celebrated on Holy Wednesday. To understand what is going on liturgically this evening, we have to be familiar with this gospel lesson. So allow me to encapsulate what its message is. We are told that when Jesus went into Bethany to the house of Simon the leper, there was a woman who came into the area where they were dining, and she opened an alabaster flask and poured out from this flask a very costly and expensive ointment, an oil upon Jesus' head while he sat at the table. The disciples, upon seeing this, were indignant. They said, Lord, what a waste. That oil that was poured on your head could have been sold for much money and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, with compassion and love, said, do not bother the woman. She has done a good thing. The poor you have with you always, but me you do not always have. She has poured this oil upon my body in preparation for burial. So it becomes quite evident why this particular pericope of Scripture is read on Holy Wednesday evening, on Holy Wednesday evening, because the burial would take place and does take place two days thereafter. Now, in that same passage, we are referenced to Judas Iscariot and the dastardly deed of which he was guilty. We are told in just two to three verses, verses 13 to 15, the following. Then one of his disciples went to the chief priest and said, what will you give to me if I deliver him, meaning Jesus, to you? And they counted out 30 pieces of silver, and from that moment we are told that Jesus, I'm sorry, that Judas, that Judas began to plan and try to determine what the best time would be in order to betray him. The story is a lovely one. It's also very poignant. 
It is lovely and it's poignant because it reflects upon the repentance and belief of the penitent woman to that of Judas Iscariot. And as one of the hymns so beautifully tells us, the former, that is to say, the harlot, the penitent woman, through repentance and belief accepted Jesus as Lord, whereas the latter severed himself from the master. The former, the penitent woman, experienced liberation and freedom. The latter experienced enslavement. And then the one, we are told, attained the kingdom of God and the other perdition. No, Judas Iscariot did not experience perdition because he betrayed the Lord. Contrary to the notions of many people, his sin, and this is told to us by one of the hymns of this evening, his sin was no more egregious than the sin of harlotry of the penitent woman. The sin of Judas Iscariot was that he refused to repent, which would enable him to believe in God and in God's mercy and believe that his sins were forgivable. Sadly, there are so many Christians, so many of us who, like Judas Iscariot, similarly believe that our sins cannot be forgiven, whether they are sins of adultery or fornication or drug addiction or alcoholism or hatred or killing or stealing. There are many people who sadly believe that one cannot be forgiven by our compassionate and loving God. From this evening's service, we learn that repentance and belief are what I like to call the sine qua non of Christian living, meaning that which is absolutely essential. Belief, of course, necessitates and requires that we profess with our lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, and so that we might more strongly believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead is why the church enjoins us to go through the great Lenten struggle and journey that leads to Pascha that commemorates the resurrection of our Lord. And then repentance, of course, necessitates that each and every one of us come to our senses, come to our senses that life with God is far better than life without him. For life with God is that which gives purpose and meaning and joy and peace in our life. And to come to this realization, of course, we first of all have to believe that God exists and make the decision to go back to him and to confess him, to him our sins in much the same fashion as the prodigal son confessed his sin, saying, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned against you and against heaven take me back as one of your hired servants. I'd like to conclude by quoting the final words of one of the hymns. Won't quote them, I'll paraphrase them. One of the hymns of the louds. The louds are those hymns that we call the any, or the hymns of praise that usually and typically are sung near the end of the author service. And I quote them because they encapsulate that spirit of penitence and belief that ought to be manifested and existentialized by all Christians who truly want to know God and attain the kingdom of God. And this is what that hymn says, paraphrasing the words. It says, fearful is the rashness of Judas. Blessed is the penitence of the penitent woman. Grant us, O God, a spirit of repentance and faith and save us. The final exhortation and plea for salvation is a plea for deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity so that we might know God and attain the kingdom of heaven as the penitent woman attained the kingdom of heaven. And by the way, and parenthetically, the penitent woman in our Orthodox Church is sometimes regarded as being Mary Magdalene, and she certainly is regarded as being the protagonist of the Kassiani hymn, hymn, which is so beautifully sung on Holy Tuesday evening in our Holy Orthodox Church. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, be with all of us. Amen.